Ja, schönen guten Abend. Ich möchte Sie ganz herzlich begrüßen im Namen des Deutschen Filmmuseums und des Afrika Live Festivals zu der 25. Ausgabe. Und ähm, genau, ich hatte ja schon auch zu Beginn erzählt, und wir schreiben ja auch zum Programmheft, dass diese, dieses Festival auch ein wenig ähm, dem ähm, Filmerbe gewidmet ist, dem afrikanischen Filmerbe. Wir versuchen einige Digitalisierungen hier zu zeigen und ähm, genau, ich werde jetzt ähm, in Englisch weiterreden, weil gleich unser Gast auch auf Englisch eine kurze Einführung geben wird. So I would um, continue with English um, now. As I said, this festival is also a little bit dedicated to um, digitalization um, of the African um, film heritage. And we have already already shown um, some um, a few examples. We had shown Hien um, in the festival by Mambeti. Um, we will st still show a um, film of Oman Simbene. And um, and um, I'm very proud that today we have um, some very special um, presentation um, um, because we have a guest here, Didi Cheka um, from Nigeria. Um, welcome, Didi. Um, and. <laughs> He's a filmmaker, a film critic, but um, um, now some years ago he started um, about um, yes looking for the history of um, Nigerian cinema, um, especially um, the period and the films um, um, after the 17th, between um, the 17th and um, then the, the start of the um, of the Nollywood um, in the 80s. So in this period, and um, he is going to the archives and he's looking for films, and um, he found. Um, the material of the film we will see tonight. And um, he will tell us a little bit about um, the story, how he found the material, what he did to it, and yes, how he made this film coming into um, into the cinemas again. So welcome, Didi. Yes, good evening. Um, uh, I'm Didi Chika Sohanjo. I, of course, originally um, was a, a, a film critic and, of course, an off Nollywood filmmaker. So there was, years ago when I started out in film, there was no idea actually in my head that someday I'm going to be a sort of archivist. So you can call me an accidental archivist. So I was. This, some few years ago, a small number of us, you know, comprising critics, um, film, film lovers, cultural workers, we set forth to find an institution dedicated to creating the first art house cinema space in Nigeria. Do you know him very well that um, ordinarily Nigerian cinema is so mostly commercial oriented? And when people talk about, when people think about Nigerian movies, Nigerian cinema, what comes to mind is the commercial home video productions known as, known as Nollywood. Cinema houses, unlike most other African countries, cinema houses are springing up in Nigeria almost on a monthly basis. And IMAX has already also um, established last year big cinema house in Nigeria, somewhere on the island. So what we wanted to do was, we wanted to offer a growing movie audience, a sort of new cinema experience, because my idea, my encounter is that almost every society where you have a cinema culture, there is, on the one hand, the commercial cinema, so to say, and then there is usually the art house cinema. In spite of the popularity of Nigerian movies, Nollywood, there is not one single cultural space in Nigeria dedicated to art house cinema, to cinema that is not commercially driven. So we set out to find this space where people can come to watch something that is different from Hollywood blockbusters and we are screening films from different cultures. We've done a retrospective on, on Fassbinder. We've done a retrospective on Werner Herzog. This is so also because one of our chief collaborators was is, is the Goethe Institute. So we programmed some German films too. But we're also showing films from across Africa, trying to get African or Nigerian audiences 
to experience films from different cultures. We've shown films by Sembene Usman, by films by Gibran and Betty Diop. And one of the things we discovered actually was that, because we are also discovering ourselves, we discovered that African cinema does not have a proper history of its own heritage, except maybe history is handed down from outside. By an act of faith, so to say, we found ourselves using the old cinema, cinema room of the old colonial film unit established in the 40s by the British, uh, by the British government. They call it then the film unit. So it was all across the empire as the British was establishing film units, um, documenting daily life in the in the colonies and showing it back home to the British audience. And of course, they were also showing educational films to the African audience and all that. So just before independence, the British handed over this big building somewhere in the heart of Lagos, handed it to the Nigerian government who continued in this tradition of documenting itself, shooting educational films. A large part of the work actually after independence was you have colonial you have previously colonized uh, the new independent government you have them documenting themselves i like to call it state visit cinema it's a cinema that is also missing in film studies in nigeria and in africa uh, comprising of government newly independent government visiting each other in a sort of festival ceremonial atmosphere and they were documenting themselves properly in pomp and pageantry so you have filmmakers who are trained by the british they were shooting proper documentaries about this about this period with narrative and music and and all those stuff now they shoot these movies and then they were keeping them inside the museum the archive which they have inherited from the building from the British. Now I did not know that this archive exist, existed when they set off to find an art space. We just wanted to show a film that is different, that is not commercial oriented. We wanted a new space where we can show film and talk about film as a work of art and not just from its commercial, commercial potential as is usually discussed in, in Nigeria most of the time. We have been, we, because it was an abandoned space, we have been there for one year showing movies and one day we said let's just look around this building which we have inherited what's what's behind the, the cinema house what's what's what those buildings back there what are they for so we took a little trip the door was the doors were broken so we simply walked into this dusty dust uh, uh, scattered building at the back of the cinema and what we first noticed was the strong, strange smell that was coming at us. Back then, I've never heard of vinegar syndrome, so I've never seen film, I've never encountered it before. But this was what we discovered was responsible for the smell which we were hearing. And it was a surprise. We got into this building and we saw rooms filled with cans and cans and cans of abandoned films, most of them in very, very bad condition, going rusty. There are some labels on some of these cans, and you could try to see exactly what was there. Some of them state visits, you know, some of them documentary about independence, the Queen's visit to Nigeria, independence celebration and all that. We had no idea what we were going to discover. So we, at first I was curious if I could find the cans of the Second World Black Festival of Arts and Culture held in Nigeria in 1977. We found some of these cans in the, in the building. But then, strangely, I picked up one of the cans, and what was written there was the, was the title, Shegu Umar. Now, it was, I, I at first couldn't believe this, that, oh, what strange miracle has put this can in my hand. I knew this film. I knew about this film in my work as a film critic and as a film student, but hardly any person from my generation have seen this film or remember this film. We only know this film because 
It was based on a novel originally written by Nigeria's post-independence first prime minister who was killed in the, in the coup attempt that actually caused the abandonment of this archive. And now here is the can in my hand. We opened it and it was a big disappointment. It was all as if you put it in a freezer and completely froze all over. It was like it was like a lump, a rounded lump of block. And we said, okay, we have seen it. And now this is what we have. The initial impression, the initial reaction actually was one of anger. Why wasn't proper care taken of this film? Who let it who let this happen? And then we began seeing other accounts of the film, some of them a little bit better than the first one, what we what we found. But nothing more. We saw like maybe 12 or 13 cans of film that you could practically not do anything with. And so the Nigerian Film Corporation said, oh, but there's another archive somewhere in Joss. Maybe you can find what you are looking for in this film. Joss is on the other side towards the northern part of Nigeria. It's the coolest city in Nigeria because it's it's on the high points on the rocky, it's situated on a very high place. So it's a little bit, it has got climatic condition. And then we went to Jaws and uh, without hope, actually, we were hoping that, oh, look, please, wishing that something can happen, we could see a little bit of this film, but we didn't hold that much hope that we could get anything out of this. And then we went to Jaws and we saw this big building that is called the National Film and Video Sound Archives. And we came in there and there was approximately, say, 10,000 cans of films, not properly documented. Nobody knows what is or what are in these cans. But, well, some of them had labels. So we had to go through the process of checking can by can, can by can, to check the whole can of film, cans of film in that building. And so we found like 80 cans of films bearing the label Shehu Umar in relatively good condition. And then began the question of, so yes, we think, we think we have found everything we can use to put these films together. It was labeled properly, real one, real two, real three, real four, everything, and including, including the sound. Having got this film, now the challenge was that, oh, look, the colors are all, are all faded, so you don't really know exactly what we can do with, with it. I think tomorrow we're going to show some images of some of the of the state of this cans of this archive when we first found them, the state of the film prints, what we first looked at before we got in contact with the Arsenal Institute of Film and Video Art. We we are just there without prior experience of how to deal with films in this condition. We, it was just a long distance distant message. Can, what does it smell like? Does it smell like acid? Uh, the, I really don't have a proper idea how acid smells, but I know it gives this, there's a strong odor that comes from the can. And we were doing back and forth trial error with the arsenal. And we brought some film experts from Indonesia, from the Lab 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 in Indonesia, who have dealt with a similar experience as Nigeria. So, and up till now, there has not been a real technical expert from, say, Germany who can say, oh, look, this is where we can go with this film. There was no scanner in Nigeria to deal, to deal with it. But with the support of the Goethe Institute and the German embassy, we are able to have this film, bring them down to Berlin, where we began the process of viewing them uh, then trying to uh, see what we could do with them. And then with the, at the ARI, uh, studio in in Berlin and in Munich, we began working with these image, these films, trying to put the images together. And so we worked with the image, uh, with the film. We dealt, dealt with the image in in Berlin and in Munich with the support of Ari. Then the sound was also an, was an entirely different uh, challenge. The sound we got also in collaboration because the German Foreign Office have committed some money and the. German embassy have committed some money. I say the Balinale brought in the initial maybe 25,000 that okay, we are going to help in the restoration of this. So we went to the we went to Bologna and to deal with the to work with the sound. And it was like two, three months to the Balinale, and we are saying that 
what is the possibility of dealing of putting this film together in a relatively good uh, condition in which it could be uh, it could be uh, projected the challenge was okay now we have the technical means of putting it together how do we put the film together in the same color composition in which the filmmaker actually saw his film because there was no template there was nothing to view but luckily we uh, we saw in the whole 80 cans we saw just one 16mm print with the color still in order better than every other thing so we could see that okay this was the original color uh, template in the 70s when this film was shot so we could put this film together in, in, in uh, uh, according to the idea of how the filmmaker color graded his film and saw it in, in, uh, back then in the 70s and this was the film that we presented we put together successfully presented in Balinale 2018 and, and through the forum section we have succeeded in presenting this film in in Cairo we presented in Cologne we presented this film in two three places more outside Nigeria but we have not presented this film since we put it together in Nigeria so hardly just a few of us who are together have seen this film in Berlin sometime last year and we the excitement right now was that okay this film rescued from the past though know, we are going to have to see it for the first time in Nigeria sometime this year and we are going to see it with new with new eyes eh? and this discovery have triggered subsequently we are trying to put a sort of retrospective together about this filmmaker so we could have because we now have in collaboration with the Goethe University Frankfurt a sort of a master uh, archive studies master which we are going to institute at the Nigerian Film Institute who owns the film archive and the university in Jersey. It is from this process of trying to reclaim history, trying to see exactly how did we get, how did we arrive at Nollywood, where Nollywood is coming coming from, was there a Nigerian film history beforehand which nobody talks about which people are just beginning to discover. This is where this film we want to project now is coming from. Everything about this film, we have left it, the length, the sound, everything according to how the filmmaker produced his, uh, put it together originally. So what we are going to watch tonight is the director's cut. We have not tampered with it to reduce it, to re-edit it or whatever. I was toying with the idea for a while should you tamper with this film to re-edit it a little bit or should we leave it the way the filmmaker left it and this is what we are going to present to the Nigerian people that this is the film the way it was some time ago I'm going to talk a little bit more about the work we are doing in the archive sometime tomorrow when we are going to present other clips from different directors and from these same directors that shows exactly step by step the processes how we found the archive the rusted situation in which we first encountered the archive and what we have been doing with the archive till this particular period. So if there is need or there is further question after the screening, I'm just also going to have to let everybody to discover this film the way I discovered it myself. This I think is the second time or the third time I'm going to watch this film outside the shores of my country where this film originated. And probably the conversation is going to be different because in Nigeria, in anticipation, we are beginning to have a proper rediscussion about what this film talks about, but this probably will talk about only after the screen of this film. So I'll leave you now to watch the film and I hope I've not spoken too long. Thank you. Thank you.